Hello, welcome to Women in the Cyber World with Caroline Morrow. I am one of the faculty at Alamo College's St. Phillips College. Welcome today to the Wento virtual conference showing I'll be educating you and enlightening you on the field of information technology and the career of cybersecurity and network administration. Before we get started, I have a question or I have a comment, maybe a request. If you can right now, close your eyes for a minute. Don't fall asleep now. What I want you to do is picture an IT professional or maybe an engineer. Now picture a cybersecurity professional. Picture a network administrator. Do any of those terms sound unfamiliar to you? Did you picture a gentleman? a young man? Did you picture someone in a hoodie? All right, open up your eyes now. I want you to take a look. These are some of the images of some of women in the field. Women who work in technology, either with the military, like the US Navy. Women who work with electronics and networking, or maybe computer ma maintenance repairing systems. Women who work in admin network administration, setting up our information technology nodes, our have, making sure we have the internet up and running so we can share information on a daily basis. Or women who are programming, or people like myself, ladies who are teaching, women who are teaching the future professionals of tomorrow in information technology and cybersecurity. Now, when you had your eyes closed, you probably pictured a, a gentleman not knowing that there are many women. Now you did not probably know, but there's only 47% of women that make up the workforce today that are female. However, when it comes to technology, information technology that is careers, only 25% of those information technology careers are taken up by women today. The numbers get even smaller when we think about the demographics of ethnicity. We'll talk more about that in a couple. So let's go ahead and get to know me a little bit better. So number one is I have several hats at St. Phillips College. First, very first and very important hat is I'm an information technology slash cybersecurity instructor at St. Phillips College. I teach students who are in high school for dual credit. I teach returning military or military departed um, professionals who are looking for a set career. And I also teach the traditional college students. So I see all different types of age groups of ethnicities and genders when it comes to this. Another hat that I have is I'm very involved in the community. So besides being an instructor, I have the opportunity and the privilege of being a volunteer faculty advisor. So I am in charge of a student organization called the SPC Cyber Tigers. And the focus is commun community awareness, cybersecurity awareness, and competitions. Those are three of the key items I focus on with my students, as well as scenarios through role play. Another hat that I have there at St. Phillips College within my business information solutions department is I'm the programs coordinator. So I have the luxury of helping to grow the IT pathway at our campus. And I have the opportunity to give feedback to several school districts in San Antonio who are trying to pursue and build information technology pathways at their local school districts. You might be wondering about my education. I have an, I'm a graduate of San Antonio. I'm a first generation um, college graduate for my family. I actually pursued my first degree was gonna be in engineering. I started off as a biomedical engineering major, quickly figured out that wasn't for me and switched over to technology. Now you might be wondering, how did I get into technology if it's not a female dominated field? Well, I was an intern at a computer lab when I was at my first um, campus I was, I was going, attending and there was a gentleman working on the computer that caught my attention, that caught my eye. So I went ahead and asked him, what is he doing? What does he have in front of him? I started probing his brain. And that's when I quickly learned about computers. I didn't have a computer growing up. We couldn't afford it at that age, at that time. So my first actual computer that I got exposed to was there in college. Now, I went ahead and switched over to a community college to have my, get my first degree. I went from a university, quickly ran out of money. Um, and also the time, because I was working three jobs, so I pursued my associates first, which for me, that was the way for me to go. 
So I ob obtained my Associate of Science in General Engineering. Then after I obtained my Associate of Science in General Engineering, I went ahead and received my, or earned, not received, but earned and received my Bachelor's of Business in Information and Computer Information Systems. My Bachelor's of Business Administration and Computer Information Systems from Texas A&M, Kingsville. Now I'm back in school right now. I'm happy to say as I'm finishing up my Master's of Science in Information Systems and Security from Our Lady of the Lake University. It's never too old to continue on with your education and you're never too old to continue learning. In the field of information technology, you are constantly learning and constantly evolving because technology changes every day. Now, when it comes to my workforce experience, I started off at the bottom and worked my way up. And I'm very proud and happy to say that. I was the type of person I just didn't want to get thrown in, in a position. I wanted to earn my way along my positions. So when I finished high school, I was fortunate enough to find out about a program through the Alamo College's workforce program. I was able to sign up and apply for a program with the government. Once I had my interview, I, was, um, I applied to the STEP program, this um, student temporary employment program to be exact. And I started off as a student aide. I worked as an administrative assistant. Then I was a representative for our group. I worked on behalf of the Air Force Outreach Program Office, which was a subordinate of the Small Business Administration that worked with 8A and HUBZone. Um, businesses were trying to go ahead and do work with the government. I marketed. I worked as a web designer in that position. And then I was able to obtain and bond with a mentor. So what this means is as I evolved and I slowly figured out what I really wanted to do as a career, which was technology, my director partnered me up with a mentor, which was a network engineer who actually took me under his wing and started showing me the different ways of technology. And I think that is the main reason why I've been so successful because I was able to get exposed to a diverse set of areas and avenues in technology. So I learned some basic forensics there. I learned network administration, computer maintenance, customer support, um, help desk, programming, as I mentioned, web design. So I did a little bit of everything to get a really good exposure. And the exposure, along with my education, pretty much just gave me the momentum to keep on growing as I furthered my career. So after I went ahead and was near my end of my degree and my bachelor's, I became an, a, a network admin assistant. So an IT network admin assistant. And then I fell into teaching. And teaching, I've taught engineering, electronics, computer science, electrical engineering, computer maintenance, networking, um, computer programming, um, cybersecurity with forensics focus as well. And that was just at the high school. And then as a dual credit instructor, I had the opportunity to teach operating systems like Windows and Linux, um, networking, forensics again, and computer maintenance and programming. Now, I took a break from teaching, went back into technology because I felt like I was getting outdated. And I went and started again at the bottom. I started off as a help desk specialist. And that's too not much not the bottom. It was, it was a really, really interesting and fun job but they got quickly promoted into a data network and computer security specialist because of once they found out my background. Then I fell back into teaching and then I came to St. Phillips. So I've kind of been in the avenue of working around education pretty much while I've been in my workforce, IT workforce experiences, whether it was being a representative, promoting technology to actually being an instructor today. Now I have both workforce experience and teaching experience, which makes me a very marketable asset in my field. Now, if it wasn't just for my workforce experience in education, I cannot give, give all my credit to that. I would say it has to, I have my background um, using my soft skills, my problem solving skills, my communication skills, my perseverance of not giving up, liking the troubleshoot, being analytical. Those skill sets have, have brought me to where I am today as well. And my involvement in the community. This is a list of different professional organizations I've been involved in and a, a list of community events that I've actually been guest speaker for or events I've helped to put together and run, whether they're at St. Phillips or the city of San Antonio. I'm also an active member of the San Antonio um, Chamber Cybersecurity Council. I've been a member of the Women in IT group of San Antonio. And I'm also a member of several student organizations or professional organizations 
Now, as a student, what I want to recommend to you is that you can get involved in an organization too. If you're 16 or over, typically 16 or over, there are professional organizations that will give you either a free membership as a high school or college student, or they will go ahead and let you join with a mentor as well as your, as your role model to talk to. So there's different avenues of personal success and gains. As I like to say, personal success and nothing else. Now, one area of technology, information technology, that we'd like to focus on today is gonna be cybersecurity. So I do wanna educate you a little bit about cybersecurity, then talk to you about some of our programs and some of the data that we have on the push of what, for women in technology and the need for women in technology. So first you might hear the word cybersecurity. When I asked you earlier to close your eyes, you probably thought of a guy in a hoodie and most people do. So you think of a person, they call him a hacker. I know movies use the word hacker, but that is not correct. That bad person trying to mess up a system or take um, advantage of a system through its vulnerabilities is known as a cracker. A hacker is a person who has skill sets and tools to go ahead and defend or problem solve and fix a system or a device. So what is a cybersecurity professional? A cybersecurity professional is pretty much somebody who takes measures into account on how to protect information, or we call this data or systems from being penetrated or accessed on the, over the internet or over a network. So the main job is information security or data security. That's the job of a cybersecurity professional. Now there are some different types of attacks that are taking place um, right now. They're getting even worse. Um, are different types of malware. So malware just stands for malicious hardware. There's phishing attacks or SQL injection attacks. There's man in the middle attacks where someone's pretending to be someone they're not. Um, SQL injection attacks, I mentioned earlier, denial of service attacks, they call them DOS attacks or DDOS attacks. Um, and then zero day exploits is when a new update or a new piece of software comes out, but yet um, they find a, a, a hacker, a cracker finds a vulnerability in that software and they're able to go in and write a script to attack that software or that tool or that device. And so if there's not a solution set yet, we typically will call that zero day exploit sometimes in the field. Now, what you'll see in this chart here is gonna be different types of malware and the percentages of the distributed attacks going on. If you were to do some research, there's an actual heat map on cyber attacks that shows the United States and the country um, and how we're being attacked and how areas are attacking each other. Now, if I enticed you at all with the concepts of what I just talked about, I want you to take a look at this um, information here. I'm gonna share with you some information about the women in the workforce, women in the IT, minorities in the IT workforce, as well as some top skills and demands in Texas. Because if you're watching this video, most likely you are a student in Texas attending this, um, this conference. So right now, as I mentioned earlier, 47% of the workforce is women and 25% is female. Well, if you look at my chart in the bottom, there was a big growth in engineering, which is computer science, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and computers itself, computer maintenance, network administration, computer programming, web design, et cetera. There was a big, um, there was a slow and steady incline going up of from between 1970s and 1990s. And after the 1990s, engineering continued to grow slowly, but other parts of engineering, I started the computer side per se, but then computers started to go downhill. Because today when people hear the word computers, the older generation tend to think a computer maintenance specialist. Somebody is building a computer. Well, today we need computer specialists, information technology specialists, cybersecurity specialists, programmers, um, computer scientists, network administrators. I can go on and on and on. There's tons of different kinds of fields and careers within information technology. So if you think of a tree, we can branch out and branch out and branch out. There's are hundreds of different types of avenues you can go to in the field of information technology. But we also need to take a look at the ethnicities behind this. So 5% are typically Asian information technology. And then when it comes to Hispanics and African-Americans, also known as Blacks, um, it's about 3%. So back in 2019, it was 1% of Hispanics. Now we've kind of gone up just a little bit to 3%. And then for African-Americans and Black, um, Black people, it's kind of stayed the same. So Hispanic people and Black people and Asian people all are all different types of minorities, 
their representation in the field of information technology and being female is even smaller than, than us as a whole. So we need to think about this when it comes to those demographics. And when we think about Caucasians, Caucasians also only make up 16%. So even that number is not that big as well when it comes to the female representation. Now, I wanna share with you the top technical skills that they're looking for in Texas right now. And these technical skills are not just for cybersecurity. They're not just for information technology. They're just technical skills, top technical skills in Texas. And if you notice, a majority of this list is what? Driven towards information technology professionals. We have Microsoft Office, Quality Assurance, st um, st um, Structured Query Languages, SQL for short, Java, that's a programming language, Preventive Maintenance, that's your troubleshooting, Technical Support, Troubleshooting, Software Development, Creation. And then we have an operating system, Python, another programming language called, um, sorry, Python another operating system, Linux, and then web design, hypertext markup language. On the right-hand side, you're gonna see the annual salary and what are the openings in Texas for several different types of jobs, but I want you to hone in on and see how there is a spotlight on some IT positions. Computer systems analyst is one, computer user su um, support is another, software developers is another. Now, those are just three different ones from this list. These are by demand based on the 2020 to 2026 guide. Another item you wanna keep in mind is there was a jobs posted uh, report that was driven November 20, 2018 to April 2019 for the state of Texas. And there was um, the fields of IT built into this as well. Software developers and applications was one of them. Computer operators of different types Customer service representatives will also include your help desk um, representatives. Then if you go down, there's a network and computer systems um, administrators, computer user support specialist. Again, we used to call these help desk positions in the past. You'll see the word help desk and the words computer user support specialist. Then we have computer systems analysts and then we have managers as well as security. So these are the different types of work, um, workforce positions. And if you see the positions openings are in the thousands when it comes to these jobs. On the left-hand side are the different types of soft skills that are needed. So if you have any of these soft skills, make sure you continue practicing on them. If you haven't heard of any one of these words, make sure to research them. These are very important skill sets to have and to obtain. How can you get them? Join. If your school has an IT pathway, a CTE, Career and Technology Education IT pathway, join that. If your school has a competition in robotics or STEM, join that. If you have any STEM classes, join those. Whatever way you can get yourself into some kind of course that we can problem solve using problem solving, troubleshooting steps, um, being creative, not just looking at a book, but actually being thrown into a scenario and trying to figure things out. Those are gonna be helpful avenues for you to get into this field. The next item is gonna be jobs by education. I want you to highlight this. So this right here on the left is a list of jobs that are available in Texas by education along with the salary range. I just want you to provide you some demographics since you're in high school um, where you're thinking about what I wanna do, what I wanna go into. And I also wanna expose you to different types of titles and job avenues and what you need. So some of these you're gonna see are just workforce trainings like the computer user and network support specialist, the computer automated teller, office machine operator, the CNC or workforce training, um, security fire alarm installers, those, um, they're gonna be people who go into the field, they can just get out of high school, go get a job and they'll get trained and a certification. That is one avenue to get into this field. Then you have people who go into school for their associates. So they're obtaining some workforce training along with their degree and they're either gonna transfer for a bachelor's degree or they're gonna graduate, make sure they obtained an industry certification like the CompTIA A, um, A plus for computer maintenance or the CompTIA Network Plus or the Cisco CCNA certification. They're gonna focus on the industry certification as well, as well as their workforce training or their education. So you're gonna find that here. And I included the websites as well if you wanna take a look at these on your own. Now, top tech positions for females that have been listed in 2019 was project management, business an analysis or business analyst, other types of general IT positions, 
quality assurance testers, which I had told you that was a skill set earlier in Texas, which are going to be your penetration testers as well. And then technical recruitment, okay, or technical writers as well is another one. So there's going to be a, an avenue that for everybody when it comes to information technology, the key item is do you know what it is and you know how beneficial it can be. Now, when we think about the job titles we just learned about, we got to think about the women as well and the demographics I told you earlier. Well, if you go by job role, the numbers even go lower. So for example, when it comes to scientists, there is not a value as far as a number of African-American Black women versus Latina Hispanic women in comparison to Asian and Caucasian women. When it comes to information technology or information security analysts, there's 3% African-American and Black American women, Latin American or Latina and Hispanic women. We don't have a number here, but at this point I told you in 2020, it's about one to 3%. I, Asian women, there's not, there's the value of zero is reported right now. And then the women's total, the numbers aren't that high. They're all below, right? All below 30%. So the highest one is gonna be your managers. So 27%, which is pretty good. Women are growing in the, in the field of management but it's computer information systems management. And that's not the high, high positions, but those are gonna be your managers. So what is the future of information technology when it comes to cybersecurity in Texas or cybersecurity as female representation? So on the right from the website called CyberSeq, I took a list of the feeder um, positions in cybersecurity. And then I gave you an entry level midpoint and advanced level the bubbles are the titles of different types of job titles. But on the left, what I went ahead and gave you were the key job titles from CyberSeq in reference to Texas and the need. Did you know there's around 27 to 29,000 positions open in Texas in cybersecurity? That is just one part of information technology cluster. And the previous slides I showed you, I showed you different types of information technology career paths that you can take. I'm just focusing on one now. I'm going di diving deep into one. So we have cybersecurity engineers, cybersecurity analysts, cybersecurity consultants, software developers, and software engineers. Those are going to become those people could become your penetration testers. Typically, they create software, they test the software, they like to break and um, break stuff to make it better. Um, systems engineers, cybersecurity managers, or cybersecurity administrators uh, can also be your network engineers, or your network administrators, or your network architects, your vulnerability analysts, penetration testers I mentioned earlier, and your IT auditors. Those are all current positions that are called your hot positions, your top 10 hot positions in Texas right now in the field of cyber. As I mentioned earlier, you need to look at certifications. Industry certifications is very, very important. For me, when I was going to school, I was pursuing my associate's degree and then my bachelor's degree, and now I'm focusing on my master's. When I was in my civil service, my government position, I was, I was obtaining the military equivalent to the CompTIA position. So back then we wouldn't have the comp deal we would have to take, we would have a military and DOD training and would have a test that route. So I became like A plus computer maintenance certified, network certified. And then I also went ahead and got certified um, through a different avenue outside of the government on forensics, since that's something I was working on that was privately um, trained, I was an NSA component. So those are things you wanna keep in mind is there's different types of trainings based on what you're going to be doing and working with. So your education and your workforce experience, as well as industry and certifications, make you a well-rounded individual to actually market yourself. So today, when I, I, I say I choose to work at St. Philip's College, I really do mean that. I can work wherever I want because of my background. And also because I'm information technology, there's a big need and a push for positions out there and females. So I am marketable and I get to choose where I want to work. So that's a good thing to have. So that's flexibility. Now on, the, on this next slide, I just wanna show you just general information technology STEM jobs. And there's a list of jobs that are either science-based or technology-based, but then the male to female aspect and ratio of pay. So I know I gave you some um, salaries earlier, but you also wanna keep in mind, women do make less. The demographics, uh, the not demographics, but the, the salary scales for women and men are a little bit different when it comes to payments, which we're trying to, to equalize that, right? The United States trying to equalize that, but we still have a long way to go. All right, I'm gonna do is take a couple and I wanna go ahead and show you a, a video in reference to some um, information technology overview.
With the integration of the internet in most aspects of daily life, our collective use and reliance on information technology grows on a continual upward arc. Vast amounts of data stream through technology used for business operations, governance, education, and entertainment. Keeping the information flowing and equipment working properly is the job of information technology or IT professionals. IT offers a great variety of both creative and technical careers, from designing and developing software applications, databases, and websites to providing customer support and ensuring information security. More so than perhaps in any other industry, many IT jobs can be performed remotely as long as a reliable internet connection is available. That said, several major cities represent the highest numbers of IT job openings: San Francisco, San Jose, Seattle, Los Angeles, Dallas, Fort Worth, and Chicago. A number of smaller cities are also adding significant numbers of IT jobs, including Austin, Charleston, Charlotte, Fort Myers, and Madison. The United States is the world's largest technology market, and the industry is a major contributor to our overall economy. Quick facts to know: Almost 550,000 new IT jobs are expected in the coming years, with substantial growth in information security, software and application development, cloud computing, and data storage. Information technology jobs are well-paying, with wages that are twice as high as the national average for all occupations. The U.S. accounts for 32 percent of the technology market worldwide, contributing over 1.7 trillion dollars to the economy each year. All right, so that was given by Career One Stop. It's a workforce environment by the U.S.、Um, Department of Labor and the Bureau. Now, what I want to do is move on and give you some information about the pay and the field of cybersecurity. So, there currently is expected growth from 75 billion back in 20,、um, 2015 to 170 billion in 2020. And now we're in 2021. So, remember I mentioned earlier there there were positions open. So, this is a cyberseek website I mentioned, and you and you type in cyberseek.org/heatmap/html. Um, you'll find um the heat map that has the whole United States in different areas. Now, if you're watching this video and you're not in Texas, you can just click on your state and you can find some information on this heat map. Now we have 21,000. Give、uh, just an estimation from 20,927. Roll it um let's roll it up to 21,000 positions open in cybersecurity. And when we think about those positions as a whole of openings in Texas, there are currently 65,271 positions、um, filled right now. But we have twenty on top of that twenty one thousand open. The workforce demand ratio to supply is very low, so the national average typically three point five, and in Texas we're at three point one. So the supply of workforce workers, cybersecurity workers, is low. So what this means is the state of Texas and other states are having the same situation, is they're having to hire from other states. So people are competing for these employees, or they're hiring from outside of the country to bring these people in. That is the need we have for the field of IT in the United States. Now, when we think about geographic concentrations,、um, the national average is about 1.0, so our, low, our colon is pretty low at 0.80. And in reference to our cyber, top cybersecurity titles, I gave them to you earlier already, but they are here as well. And again, these are all positions that deal with cybersecurity, or they are actual cybersecurity positions within themselves. Now, you might be thinking. You, I learned about the skills that are needed. I learned about the different types of jobs available in information technology and cybersecurity, which is part of information technology. It's one, one that one pieces of that branch, like it's a branch and sub branch.、Um, now, why are there not a whole lot of women? At least there's only 25 percent. Well, there's several reasons. Number one is going to be negative perceptions. People tend to think when you hear the word information technology or the word cybersecurity that it's not a field meant for women. The second item is it's a lot of math and science, and so women don't like math and science. That's another negative perception. That is not true. Women do like math and science. So we just have a, a we typically see women or ladies in middle school, young ladies in middle school, tend to change in their interest. And number three is when it comes to negative perceptions, people do not really know what the position entails, so they think that you're doing something that you're not. So for example. People tend to think if I'm going to be in the field of information technology, I'm going to be working 
building computers, taking apart computers, and maybe working with ladders and being outside all day. That is just one role within information technology. I just described a computer maintenance technician and a network technician. So there's a cybersecurity specialist that work behind a desk in an office. You have programmers who are working with software. You have people who are, again, those engineers who like to test and, and break. Um, you also have the penetration testers, and there's tons of different types of positions. So the, again, the first misconnotation is going to be negative perceptions. The second item that people typically gravitate away from IT is because they hear the word terminology. It's a lot of terminology, a lot of acronyms. That's true. It is a lot of terminology, a lot of acronyms, but any field that you go into is going to have a lot of terminology. If you go into the medical field, you're going to have terminology. You go into welding, electric, um, electrician, electronics field, you're going to have terminology. And you're going to have some math and science as well. So you have a mixture here. So we tend to fit into STEM quite a bit. Now, the lack of experience is another reason why women don't um, have positive strands in growth in this field is if women are not pursuing um, challenging courses in middle school and high school in technology or STEM, and they're not being exposed to this through clubs and organizations when they're in K-12, then when you get into high school, you're not looking at this. When you get into college, you're not looking at this either. So you're not being exposed and given the opportunities to gain experience in problem solving, troubleshooting, um, peer growth, um, group work, et cetera, role playing. At the same time, you go into the workforce, you're not looking to go into IT, so then you're also lacking experience there. That is not true. You're taking math classes, you're taking science classes, you are working in teams when you have team projects. Those are giving you experience and that's also giving you soft skills. So don't ever think you lack experience and soft skills because when we look at information technology professionals, we need students who are well-rounded, who, who know how to write, who know how to read, who know how to talk, who have good listening skills and who are task oriented as well. So you can gain those experiences in CTE courses I mentioned before, if they, you have them at your campus and you should if you're in Texas. And if you don't, then join dual credit AP classes that are gonna be at a higher caliber of testing you and your knowledge. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. So if you're a high school student or a middle school student, I have a couple of items to tell you. Number one is stay focused, set a goal. Set a goal one per year, one per semester, or one per quarter, or one per er, um, season. Well, one's goal in the spring, one goal in the fall, one goal in the winter, one goal in the summer, okay? So if you set up a goal, make sure you complete the goal, whether it be cleaning up your room, raising, uh, uh, getting good grades, being involved in a club or organization, you determine what's going to be. Now, the second that I wanna do is tell you, if you're gonna be somewhere, be present where you're at, and whatever you are doing. So if you're going to commit yourself to maybe volunteering on a Saturday, that's your goal to volunteer and get so many hours, be there and be present. Don't be sidetracked by maybe your phone or other people. Focus and represent yourself in the best way possible. You never know who's gonna be a potential employer in the future. Number three, locate a role model or a mentor to talk to. It doesn't matter what field that you're interested in. It could be IT, cybersecurity, network administration, or something else. You need to make sure that you go and you talk to professionals in that field while you are right now in middle school and high school. So that way you can go ahead and learn from them. How did they get there? What challenges do they have? What does a job look like? What does a job entail? What does the environment look like to see if it's a fit for you or not? The next item is follow your dreams, okay? Again, when I started off with my dream, my dream at first was to be a doctor, a veterinarian. Then I switched to biomedical engineering. And then I switched to computer science. And then I switched into computer information systems. And my changes, my dreams changed and they fluctuated. They, I changed as I went through my career. So again, when I started off as a student, as student aid, I got exposed to different types of pro programs. Hence my degree also went ahead and changed along with that. At the same time I was going to school, I started learning what I did and did not want to do. When I went to school, there weren't many CTE programs where I was at. So I got exposed to IT through my workforce experiences and then through the classes I took in college. And then the last thing is have a can-do spirit attitude. Don't ever think you cannot do something. Okay, ladies? A lot of times we're told we can't do it. You can't do this. The guys are doing it. You can't do that. You're not great enough. Don't listen to that. Have a can-do attitude. 
be determined, just know you're going to be challenged and then overcome. All right. So if I did I give you a highlight and I got you interested in IT and information technology or cybersecurity, let me share with you some information about awards and scholarships, how to fund your school. So right here is just a small list of some different certification um, trainings or um, scholarships or funding opportunities to help you. And there's also some information on jobs, some summer internships as well. In San Antonio, we have something called SA Works for high school females and high school males, um, where you can actually go in and work over the summer. And around this time, March and April is when people are starting to apply for that position, go do a Google search for SA Works and you'll find it. And that's, that, and that's on this list. This is more, more based on scholarships. Um, at St. Phillips College, we have something called the Student Engagement Grant that we offer our students who are full-time or part-time students majoring in cybersecurity. The city of San Antonio has a program available is for people who are looking to get into a STEM career, STEM field and technology fits in that. Um, they're given a tuition assistance for their books and their tuition. Um, so there's different avenues. If you're going towards the military, the military will help pay for your education as well. And sometimes you can find a job who will help pay for your education. And in addition, we have opportunities for awards. If you are a female and you are currently in a club or taking CTE classes, you're considered a hacker or a coder or a technical CTE high school student, there is a something called in the group called the National Women in IT group. And we have a local chapter, San Antonio Women in IT, that you can actually join. And they have every year the Aspirations Awards where they're nominating a high school student and also an educator to celebrate them and their successes. If you are interested in that, please go ahead and check that out, okay? The next time can be organizations. I just gave you a small list. There's, there's hundreds of organizations out there along, all around the country you know, for reference to technology. What I went ahead and focused on here was some, sort of some programs focused on females. And that's, uh, at the same time, some offer summer camps. So there's Hype Her, there's Engage Women in Cyber Defense, there's Girls for Tech, there's Girl Scout Cybersecurity Patch and Game, um, game Program Patch, there's Girls Go Cyber Start, there's InfoSec um, Girls, there's She Secures, um, there's a competition called, um, it's the Air Force Association AFA Cyber Patriot Competition where you can make an all girls team if you wanted to, or you can have a mix, female and male mix, which is also good as well where you can actually go and practice and get hands-on experience. So if you don't have a CTE program, but you have a teacher or a mentor or a role model who wants to go ahead and be a coach, they can help you create a team as well. So get involved in something, ladies. Why me? Why not? Why not you? We need more women in IT. I hopefully clearly have shown why. There's a lot of positions and opportunities for flexibility. You can obtain a lot of marketable skills by going into IT, financial responsibility. I have students who took courses in IT as dual credit students, and they're pursuing a different career. They're going to combine IT with their current job later on. But in the meantime, while they're going to school, they're in an IT position helping to pay for school. I've had students who went into a different workforce avenue, and their IT background has helped them to be successful in the current avenue they're working in. Example, I can go into retail tomorrow. I can go work for a hospital, but because I'm in information technology, every single arena I look at needs an information technology specialist. So that's what you need to think about, the marketability skills and the flexibility, which also gives you financial independence. I have my house, I have my car, I take trips, I have fun, I have financial independence because of my background and education and training, as well as my workforce experience. And again, you can't forget that IT can do spirit, Education at St. Phillips College. We currently have an information technology associate applied science degree. The title is associate applied science, information technology, cybersecurity specialist. We also have a half year degree, which is called our level one degree. That's also available to our students. Our degree does transfer, does have transferability to such programs as um, Texas A&M's IT program, Texas State's, Our Lady of the Lake and Sam Houston University. Some of the universities will take a majority of the classes, if not at least a minimum of half of the courses that would transfer over to a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's of applied arts and sciences. So those are things you might wanna consider. St. Phillips College is a good place to start off at. We have three 
programs that we focus on in IT, including our computer science transfer um, degree. So we have our degree in web and mobile app development. People who want to work as programmers, you want to work with computer programming and you want to maybe look at computer science or web development. You want to create games, web and mobile app development is going to be something you want to look at. Then we have our network administration uh, professionals are people who are working with their cabling and wires, making sure that the network is up and running to send and receive messages using different types of nodes. Then we have our cybersecurity uh, specialists or our cyber defenders, as I call them, our cyber defenders to go ahead and protect our network infrastructure. So their job is to keep data secure, keep people secure, keep equipment secure. At the same time, they're using technology and tools to do that. They have to get it right every single time because a cracker, a bad person only has to get it right once. A hacker with their tools have to get it right every single time, ethical hacker that is. All right, it was a pleasure talking to you today. If you have any questions, you want some mentorship, you have questions about degree plans, please feel free to reach out to me. My name again is Caroline Mora. I'm part of the Business Information Solutions Department at St. Phillips College. We are a National Center of Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense. And we have three good programs, our cybersecurity, our network administration, and our web and mobile app development. I am an IT faculty. I focus on IT certification classes, um, boot camps for my club students in the SPC Cyber Tigers program. My phone number and email is here on this slide. Feel free to reach out to me, ladies. I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.